Hello and welcome to the Eye on the U podcast, the Miami Herald's Miami Hurricanes podcast. I'm David Wilson. I'm joined, as always, on the other line by Susan Miller Degnan, our Hurricanes beat writer here at the Herald. Susan, it's our first time in a while. Uh, it's been a very yes, busy spring in South Florida. Um, and um, not much going as on. If it wasn't busy enough with the Heat and Panthers in the finals uh, this weekend, Miami baseball back in the NCAA tournament, as they almost always are. Number nine yep. overall seed hosting uh, a regional this weekend in Coral Gables. That's where we'll start. We'll also before at the end here, we'll we'll catch up on some football news. Um, not a whole lot going on, but some transfers, some commits, uh, right. some schedule announcements today uh, on Wednesday. But let's start with baseball because um, they go to the ACC championship last weekend. Yep. Uh, an incredible win against Duke, which I, I got to see most of. Um, saw them hit all those home runs to come back in the late innings there, um, leading Clemson into the late stages of that game too, before kind of just basically running out of pitchers, uh, which really, happens, which happens sometimes in college baseball. Um, yeah, maybe yep. the difference between, um, a, a top eight, a, a national seed and, um, just hosting a regional. Um, although obviously if you're in the nine, nine seed, you get a pretty good chance to to host a super regional too. It all takes us an upset somewhere. Um, exactly. but, uh, let's start, let's start just quickly. Um, we have not, I don't think we've talked baseball at all on the show this year, um, because yeah. basketball went so on such a long run, you know, usually we, we kind of would pivot a little bit to baseball around then, but basketball kept us going for a while. Um, for people who are just checking in now, um, catching up. Uh, maybe watched the tournament uh, over the weekend where those games were all ACC network. Um, just what, what, what has stood out to you most about this Miami baseball team? What the home runs clearly are seem like they're home the runs. biggest strength of this team. Um, Hitting. Just give, give me your scouting report on this team real quick. Give me, give me a reason okay. why they can go on a run. They're, they're, they're really great at the plate. Whereas last year in the regional, you know, they lost two games by one run. Uh, and you know they just couldn't hit at all this year they're they're really good hitting uh and uh, i mean they're number four in the ncaa in the in the whole country and they're like 305 division one teams yeah. they, they're number four in home runs um they're let's see here we we've got yeah with 112 now and um 100 39 is the is the all-time record for um but it keeps going the, the count keeps mm-hmm. going until the end of the season they uh Yohandi morales is amazing okay he's batting 405 now 90 yeah, like legitimate superstar like you yeah know, one of the high best draft in the country yeah. high draft round 16 home runs i mean 680 slugging percentage I, but they have several they have six guys i don't think we've talked about that maybe but uh who have now double digit i mean two guys including a freshman a kid named blake sear who's a second baseman has 16 home runs also um and they got they they've got a lot of offensive talent on this team Mm -hmm. and by the way by the way defensive talent they're uh i think uh, yeah they're I, i wish i had it in front of me they're definitely one of the top teams fielding in the country um and if you had seen the wake forest game oh my god you didn't see that one on a little bit of it but yeah the duke one was the one i was really able to like watch the whole thing of pretty much i saw your tweets about the (laughs) off the rails or whatever you said it was just every inning people were hitting home runs every inning yeah yeah, duke's what duke was way up there in the acc and home runs too if i I think at some point exactly duke is good um yeah, thirtieth in the Miami, so. but my yeah, Miami fielding very good. I mean, the, the, Johanny Morales is so good at third base, and they this this <laughs> their center fielder Jacoby Long. This kid, I, it was number four on ESPN's uh, best pl- whatever the top plays yeah. of the day. The other day, he like he literally jumped above the fence in center field, way above it with his glove, got the ball brought it down and then the ball like dropped out of his glove and kind of slow motion sword. And then he caught it again. He's really fast. He's they're, they're very good um, defensively and, um, and pitching though, if you want to know the pitching side of it, they've had problems because they've had guys hurt. This guy, Carson Ligon, who was their starter to, to begin the year, 
um, had tendonitis in, in late April and just had his first appearance in the all in the excuse me ACC uh in the ACC tournament but Gino Damari the coach said that he was um that he was fine I I don't know because Gino said right before that that every time he pitches he's fine when he pitches and then he's in bad pain after right you need to see how he responds yeah yeah he said he was fine anyway you went so they're pitching and as you know in regional it's a double elimination tournament Mm-hmm. Okay, it's regional. There are four teams. Uh, they play Maine, um, which, by the way, I'm in the middle of writing my advance. And what's really interesting is uh, this is, I think, uh, there's 16, 16 regionals in the country, yep. 14 regionals. And uh, Coral Gables uh, is he, one of only three in which all four teams have, have played in the World Series. And I didn't realize that Maine had played in seven World Series. Um, and of course, Texas. Yeah, we should run through Miami's the one seed, yeah. Texas the two, two uh, Louisiana the three, Maine. Right. Exactly. And Texas has, t- it, it, Miami and Texas have combined for 71 College World Series appearances. Uh, Miami is number two all time with 25. Those Texas. are kind of like the two powerhouses of yeah, the like, exactly. 2000s, and, basically. Yeah. Exactly. And Texas is number one all time with 37. So, mm-hmm. uh, it's kind of it should be it should be a fun regional and uh, and if Miami um, gets out of the regional, um, they're 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 paired up with the, the winner of the Stanford um, regional. So this if Stanford is if Stanford you know gets eliminated, then yeah. and and Miami wins, then Miami would host the super regional. Yeah. Otherwise, they got to go to um, California. Yeah. Otherwise, it's bad. So, mm-hmm. as Gino says, we'll take one game at a time and and see what happens. Yeah. Um, uh, the pitching, as I mentioned, they, it kind of was like they just ran out of arms. It's been their weakness all year long, right? Because of the injuries. You know, if if Ligon is is good, that changes a lot. That's like a starter. Like that's an extra exactly. five six innings. You just get out that you didn't have all year long to work with. Um, exactly. Very important to like win the first game, right? Because if you're battling from behind, you're playing the extra game. Um, if you are as thin oh, yeah. pitching as Miami, oh, yeah. you know, some teams can survive that if they've got a, a really deep, you know, if they've got three rock solid starters. And the one thing they do have going for them, though, is they have one of the best closers in the country. Yes, they do. A, definitely one of the top few. Yeah. Uh, maybe maybe the best. I mean, I can't maybe... did he win the award last year? He was a finalist for that. I can't remember. Yeah, finalist. I think he was number two with saves. Yeah. He's, I think his stats are like, I mean, I, I would put them against anybody. And he's such a big, strong guy. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to go up against him. But he's, um, he... He's, Andrew Walters, we should say. I don't think we said his name. Yeah, Andrew. <laughs> no, I think maybe he did. But anyway, Andrew Walters, uh, who will, uh, who will be a high draft choice. I don't know what round, but yeah. I reliever. So it's a little, you know, those guys don't usually go first round, but right. maybe yeah. second round or I, yeah, I mid round, first I, five rounds, I, I'd, I'd guess. Although yeah. I thought the same thing last year, and he didn't even get drafted. But obviously that was because he well, like eventually said like I'm coming back to Miami. And stuff. That was different. He wanted yeah, yeah, yeah. a certain yes. amount of money, and that was it. Anyway, yep, exactly. Uh, he has a 1.08 ERA. All right, can you get much better? I don't think so. That 1.08. I don't know. Anyway, he's four and zero. He's batters are hitting 168 against him. Uh, he's really really good. Uh, mm-hmm. He's, you know, he has a, a breaking ball now. And, uh, you know, he, he added that to his repertoire because mostly it's a fastball. Right. So if somebody gets a hold of his fastball, that's a problem, mm-hmm. uh, you know, because it goes far. But um, la- last year, you know, Andrew's really good. Oh, he and he has 11 saves. He's definitely one of the top guys in the country. Mm-hmm. And last year, it, you know, I don't want to say ironically because he is the closer but they uh, he's the one that gave up the they fell apart yeah they fell apart with two two runs and two outs in that in the last game two uh, excuse me excuse me yeah they were up two to one and there were i think there might have been two strikes and two outs like uh they lost he had he fell apart gave up 
there was a wild pitch. There was all kinds of stuff going on. Um, so, and then they, so yeah, up three and two with two outs in the bottom of the ninth. They lost to Arizona four through four, three Arizona went on to lose to Ole Miss. Okay. Uh, who UM had lost to like the day before or whatever. And Ole Miss goes on to, to win the national championship. So that really, really. So they were the last team into the tournament too. I remember Ole Miss. They were the last team into the field. That's right. Into the, um, into the region. And that was, remember there was like, it wasn't a hurricane. I don't think, but that game, what the final game happened like late Monday or so, because it would rained all weekend. Right. It was oh. a weird, it was a weird ah, regional. That's um, a, that's, that's a great segue, by the way. I wanted to bring up rain just for a second because uh, that's going to affect this weekend. Right. I mean, that's good. David, last year, it was incredible. I mean, there was like, it was like a chance that they weren't going to get it finished. It was like a whole, it was bad. It was a really bad storm. And every year it seems like there's storms, but uh, last year was bad. And and look at it's rainy season. Yeah. So I know we're looking out the window. It's it's not raining where I am right now, but it looks like it might be about to. (laughs) It's pouring where I am, by the way, dark and rumbling and stuff, but that, by the way, we were talking about pitching and we, we can wrap this up with baseball, but uh-huh. really affects the pitching. Yes. UM already doesn't have enough pitchers. And then it, it's horrible when it starts raining after like an inning and a half. Yeah, you, you, so it can go either. It can go two ways, right? One, it's bad if you lose starters. The other is if the tournament stretches across four days instead of three days. Some of those relievers can maybe pitch a couple extra innings here and there, but um, like you yeah. said, it can it more often than not it goes bad where you have a starter you're hoping he's going to throw five innings and instead he only throws three. And it goes bad two because innings just disappear. Yeah, these are college pitcher, and then yeah. and then they and then they they um, it's bad when it goes when it gets stretched because it rains more than once. Right. It keeps raining. It rains for different games. So it's uh, anyway, let's hope it doesn't. Yeah. Now I will say, I know, I, I think every college baseball fan base complains about not having enough pitchers. Like that's the thing you have to remember is that um, no one has enough pitchers in college baseball. So like, yes, like some of those you might bl- like against Clemson, they clearly ran out of pitchers before Clemson did, but sometimes both teams run out of pitchers and then it just becomes whack. It's why college baseball is, is, so hard to predict and and sometimes a great team can just roll in a way that a great base uh, MLB team can't roll because having just that number of extra competent relief pitchers makes a, a huge huge difference and by uh, the way by the way Clemson has won 16 games in a row so yeah, they look like a powerhouse um, but Miami beat Wake who's uh, still the number one overall seed right Wake yeah. oh, still yeah. got that one seed so um, they can clearly hang with anyone um, how many innings do you think like Walters, obviously, you know, all year long, they're, they're pretty, Miami is always pretty cautious with his pitchers. How many innings do you think Walters he knows not, go this weekend? He wants to go a lot and Gino holds guys he back. Went, like he, he went he, three days in a row at the ACC tournament. Mm-hmm. I think he went three days in a row. Yeah. I think how many innings at a time I recently I've seen Gino put him in like in the seventh. Yeah. You know, I, I like in the seventh. Can't with, do that three days in a row, but yeah. Yeah, seventh with one out, whatever. But he has to, he has to re. I mean, all I he just wants to get out of the regional and then he'll worry about next okay. week. It becomes a lot easier once you get out of the, the regional is in a lot of ways the hardest. Uh, well, I guess like the College World Series is really hard, but the Super Regional is the best of three series. It becomes it's a lot a easier. Yeah, yeah exactly. I, I think. I, I I've seen him. I think definitely more than once. Put him in in the seventh. Yeah. I mean, he's listen. When it gets close, he's putting in Walters. Uh huh. Yeah, you're gonna it. have to manage him, right? Like against Maine, you want to stay away from him so you can hopefully use him against Texas. Like it's it's gonna be a really interesting to see see how they manage it. Uh, before we finish on baseball, Susan, which milkshake are you drinking? The Texas barbecue None. brisket, the Zero. Louisiana Tabasco, or the Maine butter lobster? Oh my God! Did they just come out with the notes? Uh, the, this is a Mark like shake tweeted this uh, yesterday. Okay, great. So give him to, I have not had one milkshake. They're too much sugar for me, but go ahead. What, what, t- tell it's me. Again. Texas barbecue brisket, which has vanilla with brisket and barbecue sauce. Uh, that's for Texas, obviously. Louisiana Tabasco for Louisiana. 
as vanilla, Tabasco, and Cajun spices. That's out. And, That's out. And Maine butter lobster, which is vanilla, butter, and lobster. Oh, God. They really, like, no. I think, so I... last year, the whole thing, remember, they had the buffalo wing. The, for, yes, the they put the, why did they put it, a celery they stick? put a in celery stick and, a, like, a, bu- a buffalo wing in it, like a full chicken wing in it. Oh, my um, God. And I think that, like, went viral, right? Like, people were tweeting about it. So I think they've leaned into the ridiculous. Because, you know, sometimes, I like, they'll... I remember that I think who was it last year it was Ole Miss Canisius and Arizona, Arizona and like Ole Miss they did like a hotty toddy a hot toddy like oh, yeah, milkshake yeah. which is like normal cool good idea for a milkshake uh, this year they've gone um, over the top with it Listen, I think I think yeah. because they saw the reaction to the buffalo wing one and and they're looking for uh, what's the if I one. had to do it if like you if you put a gun to my head I shouldn't even say that. <laughs> Okay, yeah. then I would do the Texas if I had to with the I brisket. Would, yeah, the I would sauce. definitely do that one. I the others are out, but I think I, I'd do I, the lobster. Not I don't know if I, I don't, trust ballpark lobster, but like in theory, oh, uh, God, lobster. David. You're gonna like, eat a Mark Light lobster, and then I, I'm just saying in theory. I don't think I would have it at Mark Light. But. I don't really like butter. I like I love butter, like croissant. I just think like butter and a vanilla dessert. milkshake could like kind of work, like. You know, it's really? like a I little butteriness. Gross. I mean, like it's, it's all dairy. It's all dairy just mixed together. That's true, but I maybe, maybe, maybe. But wait a second, they don't even. What's the UM one? I should know this. What's the? Well, they don't do a UM one, right? They do. Uh, well, they, they they do. There's Mark Light. There's a Jim Morris one. Well, they've got a million, right? They've like, got like a chocolate and the one I like. I've got their menu up right now. I haven't, I haven't been to a game all year. I've been to a game in two years actually. I didn't go to a single game last year. Now I don't live down there anymore um what's the one i like um i mean the j-row is obviously i feel like that's the favorite right what is that like, chocolate, chocolate chocolate with no. oreo oreo chocolate with oreo and fudge um chocolatey i like oreos in it with uh, the, the baseball buddy that's the one i like the vanilla shake with peanut butter and fudge oh i like that yeah okay yeah, I, I I like that. I know the Jim Morris one is like chocolate this with chocolate fudge, and <laughs> chocolate sprinkles. I don't know what Gino's is. Really, yeah, no, they don't have. I'm not sure. They're t- they're they're the Joe Z, the Joe Zagaki is with fudge and marshmallow. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, if you if you if you know if you don't want to go into a diabetic coma, don't. Uh, well, it's hard to drink it in base when you're working, right? Because like, you gotta you gotta stay out. Of I, coma. I have not had one. Okay, I haven't had one sip of one. Uh-huh. So maybe that's giving the canes good luck. So I might stay away. Unless, maybe I'll take a sip of somebody's uh brisket brisket one. <laughs> so, oh man. I'm glad you brought that up, actually. Okay, let's switch gears to football before we wrap things up. Football. football. Uh, where do you want to start? We can talk. There's some schedule. Let's do the schedule at the end. Start with. Um, okay. I was going to say let's start with the news, but let's do that last. That's fine. Um, okay. Let's some do some addition. Let's start with. Let's just run through everything that's happened. I okay. guess since we uh we last talked, um, a couple transfers coming in. Um, they get. Uh, Shamar Kirk, a junior college wide receiver. They get uh, Tyler Harrell, a transfer wide receiver uh, from Alabama via Louisville, mm-hmm. originally uh-huh. from Columbus. Um, Columbus, yay! Yeah. They get Anthony Campbell, um, a huge defensive lineman from ULM, 6'7, 265. Six, seven. Wow. Um, they get yep. Jadeus Richard, I believe, has happened since we last talked. Maybe that happened, actually. I, I don't remember exactly when that happened. Anyway, cornerback from Vanderbilt, um, who was a four-star recruit coming out of high school. Um, and then uh, this week uh, reported, we don't know exactly when it, it happened because he never made an announcement, but Louis, Luis right. Lou Cristobal, um, yep. nephew of Mario Cristobal, transferring from Georgia State. Um, any of those transfers kind of pique your interest? Um, Cristobal. <laughs> no, I, I, well, I mean, I, I, I it piques my interest because, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, how could, yeah, how like I, I said, it's all in the family. So, uh, I, I, I want to see if he has a, uh, a scholarship or not. Yeah. Uh, be interesting, but, um, probably. 
I would say. Maybe. I'm not sure. He was a, uh, you I, know, a three-star recruit coming out of high school, another Columbus guy, uh, Georgia right. State, um, you know, Miami, not just the Cristobal thing. They like the Columbus guys. They, you know, a, a lot of connections there beyond just him being Mario Cristobal's son. Right. And and obviously, like, I act pretty good, a good student, right? All those guys who come out of Columbus are yeah. pretty good students and coachable, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. Um, yeah, a depth depth addition there. The one who really interests me is Anthony Campbell, just because of that size. Um, right. He is, you know, every year you go to the draft and they'll talk about these guys who were like zero star recruits coming out of high school. Right. Uh, went to a school like ULM, um, and that's Anthony Campbell, right? He's six seven. He was not ranked as a, a high school recruit. Um, I don't know his whole story, but. He grew um, just, up in Kingston, Jamaica. Yeah, so you just look at that frame um, and the fact that he was like kind of like an unknown, basically, right? It's not like necessarily he was right. bad. Like he was a, a project, like you said, from Jamaica. Um, you know, you just you get him in with in there with uh, Jason Taylor. And um, I'm, I'm very interested to see, uh, you know, just like I said, that frame, the story, the the background, all that kind of stuff, like feels like a kind of guy who could be like a, a hidden gem a little and bit. They're talking about him also inside, which is so yeah. Weird. I mean, at that side, he's probably gonna put on, I guess, a little bit of weight, but yeah. Um, I mean, six seven to play, like that's huge. Like you can play I'll anywhere. I'll tell you who intrigues me, Tyler Harrell. I yeah. Only anybody that anybody that he's the one who's the one who I think is the best chance, to like really kind of help him this year of the this group we're talking about. Yeah, and he's he's local, so he knows this area. And he, Columbus again, a lot of um, the same things we just said about Luke Cristobal, right? And him. you know, eighteen passes for five hundred twenty three yards in two thousand twenty one at Louisville, and he has six touchdowns. So the guy is proven. Yeah, he's a burner, really, really fast. That's his kind of his calling card. Um, and he, he he missed the first half of two thousand twenty two with some kind of injury. Uh, according to Alabama, I, you know, on their website. And so last year he only had two catches for 18 years. So 18 yards. So I'd love to know the backstory on him a little bit. Um, and yeah, I mean, that that's any, any, any time they get a receiver. Yeah. It, yeah. Uh, Again, it's, it's a position we've kind of talked about the most, I'd say basically since rambo and harley left there's like they still they just need to take right. swings at guys and um find one that find a couple to work out right they've they've got some guys i think we're pretty excited about right um a lot of you know i i think the, the some of the freshmen were pretty impressive um you know we we really trust xavier restrepo but like they're still just they need they need stars there and um, yeah. i'm not saying harold is going to be like a lock to be a star but they just need to take bites at the apple with guys who are uh, have a skill. Like he's got a skill, right? That speed is a skill. Like it's going to make him useful, um, even if it's not going to make him a star. I, I agree. And I keep uh, thinking that this offensive line, if it really is as good as th that as advertised, mm -hmm. is going to help a lot with everything. Yeah. With oh, definitely. Yeah. I mean, the, the, it, if you have a, a unit that is truly excellent, it can cover up a lot of weaknesses and, that's what we think this offensive line might be. Um, yeah, they definitely have to protect Tyler. So as yeah. we talk about. Um, also, they added a couple 2024 recruits, uh, both local guys. Uh, one, Vincent Shavers, uh, linebacker oh, right. from Miami Central. These are 2024 oh. recruits. So not guys who are going to be on the team next year. Um, still a year away, but it is recruiting season. This is kind of, we're getting right up to the point where Miami kind of started its run on commits last year. That was, uh, I think, end of June last year. So that's all. I'll get to that point later. But uh, Vincent Shavers, three-star linebacker from Miami Central, played last year at, I think, played the last couple of years at Monsignor Pace. Um, and uh, the one who's who's a good player, um, but the one who's really kind of intriguing to me is another Columbus guy. We're talking about a lot of Columbus guys. Uh, Dalen Russell, defensive lineman from Columbus, another three-star guy, not a very highly ranked recruit at all, but um, was our player of the year, uh, defensive player of the year for uh, the big schools in Dade County last year. Um, a huge part, you know, Columbus won the state championship. Uh, you know, they've got a five-star defensive end on that team. And, you know, when we pick players of the year, we really like survey 
coaches a lot. And, you know, I'm not just picking out of my hat based on who I think is, is the best guy I saw all year. I'm talking to coaches and, and Columbus's coach Dave Dunn was basically like our defensive line is awesome. And this guy's our best defensive lineman, even with some of the bigger name recruits there. Um, he's small, right? He's listed at six one, I think it's probably a bit right. Um, but uh, hit 11 tackles in the state championship game as a defensive tackle and forced a fumble and had a sack or wow. so um, a lot to like about him, even if the size is, is a question mark. How many of these guys do you, you know, how, how many do you think end up sticking once you get out? Yeah. So, cause what are they're at nine commits right now? Only one is a four-star recruit um, chance Robinson from St. Thomas Aquinas. Um you know, I think it's hard to take, um, you know, like the, these three star guys are, they're getting like, they're not going to probably flip somewhere because like, you know, like Miami's going to lose them to another school. Um, it's hard to oh. take a, it's hard to take a local kid and then drop him. Right. And then say like, actually yeah. we, we like this guy more, like we don't have room for you anymore. Um, now, we should, what I wanted to say at the top was I know a lot of people are like, why is Miami's class? Why is it all these three stars right now? Um, a year ago, they get Miami, bumped, right? Well, that'll that could be one thing, right? Like some yeah. of these guys are going to climb, but the other thing, yeah. like you know, I don't know if Dalen Russell will ever be a four star recruit just because he's small. Like when you're only six foot six one and you're a defensive tackle, you got to be like Ruben Bain essentially um, to be like a a really highly ranked recruit. Um, But the other thing is like Miami's run on recruit, you know, we think of that great summer run they had on on, of commitments last year, right? That all started the last weekend of June um, when they got um, uh, Jaden Rashada was the first dominant. They had a couple, I think they had um, the the Washington twins were committed by then. Um, And then they got Jaden Rashada the last weekend of June and then they got like Ray Ray Joseph a couple of days later. They got Francis Mangoa on July 4th. Um, they got Riley Will. It was like every five days they were getting a, a like top 200 recruit basically. So right. um, they got a lot of three stars right now. And and like you said, some of those guys will bump up. Some are just like one's a punter. Like he's going to be a three. He can be the best part of the country. He's going to be a three-star recruit. Um, but the other thing is that just like, they got plenty of time. Like I'm, I'm not worrying at all yet. Yeah, they like, do. They've lost, you know, they, they missed out on Jeremiah Smith, right. The five star who's going to Ohio state, like it's a tough loss, but like, you're not going to win them all. So um, I don't know if, if on July 4th, this recruiting class still is missing a bunch of like, it's still whiffing on guys and feels like it's not going anywhere. Then yeah, I'll, I'll worry a little bit, but like recruiting season has not started yet. Like, yeah, a yeah, true camps, camps are in June. June is when recruiting season starts. And and also uh and also <laughs> the season. I mean, I, I I mean the season affects things too sometimes. Yeah. People yeah. start moving around or thinking oh, oh especially with NIL now, it's like guys flipping more than ever. For sure. Yeah. So I, I you know, I, let's see how UM does. All of a sudden if UM starts doing really well, people are more interested and yeah. There's a lot of time left, as you said, a lot of time. Yeah, I don't think they're taking guys now because they're missing on other guys, right? It's too early to be like, we missed on a receiver. We got to go get a backup plan right now. Like, those are, like, we're like 10 months away from National Signing Day and, um, you know, seven months away from the early signing day. And so, uh, yeah, pl- plenty of time. I'm I'm not worrying, but I, I wanted to spotlight Dalen Russell, especially because he's a, uh, a really, really good player who might not be that have the high ranking. And, and, you know, sometimes if you're too small, you just can't overcome that in college football. Right. But um, sometimes you can, but sometimes you can, and and he's really good, high character, right. Another Columbus guy. Um, And uh, I think anyone who watches football in in Dade County knows that that he's a a really good player and, and is the kind of guy that, if he went somewhere else, we would maybe be hearing in a couple of years, like, why did Miami let that guy get away? Yeah. I don't, I, I don't know how, I mean, I, I don't know how much the coaches look at three star and I mean, yeah, no, they, they don't, they don't, but, I, I, but the three star, their stars are based off 
largely kind of based off college coaches evaluations. Like, yes, the guys at 24 seven and on three, like they're ranking with their own things. But like if an Alabama, if Alabama wants a guy, they know that guy's better than a three-star recruit. Like they, right. But again, things can move. Like Dalen Russell will probably get bumped up because Miami decided he's good. <laughs> so, um, exactly. exactly. Um, do you want to let's let's finish up with the schedule stuff? Yeah. Uh, four game times announced: um, Bethune yep. Cookman, uh, Miami of Ohio, uh, whatever the two notable ones: Texas A yeah. and M, uh, a three thirty kickoff um, on yep. ABC. Um, what is that? The second week of the season? September 9th, Saturday. Oh, second a, week, Saturday right? a rare Saturday. I mean, today, <laughs> three out of the four game times for big some big games were, yeah. uh, were not on Saturday. Right. So, um, yeah. So yep. that's the big one, 3.30, week two. Um, I think a big one to me. And then is, the other one, we should say Boston College, uh, the day after see, Thanksgiving. Noon day after Thanksgiving. Off. BC and that and this year there's no there's no um divisions so mm-hmm. there's no Atlantic no coastal and uh you know it's just who has the best per- winning percentage or whatever and and uh you know it's fun the last game is always fun and and it's usually means something usually yeah right the last game in Boston and it's at Boston College it's it's November uh, 28th or 29th, my story. something like that. It's the day yeah. after Thanksgiving. It, Friday, November 24th. 24th, yeah. In Boston, it can be snowing on November 24th. Yeah. You know Easily. what it reminds me of when they played Pitt? I think that was a noon game the day after Thanksgiving when they lost. Uh, but I lo- – oh, yeah. Well, I, yeah. Kenny was... Pickett's first start. Oh, my God. I'm ready. Yeah, I've seen some some Pittsburgh games in the snow. Yeah. Also, but but also, um, uh, yeah, Boston. I mean, playing at Boston is really fun. They'll hype that game up a lot, um, and uh, yeah, that that that. I'm really looking forward to that one. And the other one was seven thirty. You know what? There's no the they're night games. I mean that the opener the right is seven p.m. and then the Texas A and M is. Oh no, Texas A&M is three thirty. You're right, and then Bethune Cookman seven thirty p.m. They made uh-huh. sure they got that, uh, and that's a Thursday, by the way. Right, September fourteenth. So, um, yeah, I I'm looking forward to the schedule. I'm looking forward to going to Philadelphia for the Temple game. Yeah, there you go, the Manny Diaz Bowl. The Manny Diaz slash Al Golden Bowl. Yeah, the Al Golden Bowl too. Right, I forgot about that. Yeah. Um, Exactly. So, yeah, I'm, not, I'm 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 looking forward to at Florida State November 11th. So, yeah, we got got some got some good ones. The Texas A and M obviously will be. You know, we you were up there last year. That was a night game. That was a good. Um, that was a great game. Kind of. It was like a kind of a terrible game, a very entertaining, competitive game. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Some yeah, bad yeah. football in that game though, um, which turned out to be. Uh, prescient considering how both of those team seasons wound up going um really true. I, don't, I don't know if it'll be a top 25 matchup this year but who knows you never know miami and texas a&m always seem to start the year around around listen 25, they, put so. their, they put that game on, on abc yeah. it's the only national game on somebody thinks if tv thinks it's a big game so yeah. or well i mean miami and texas a&m will pro- probably both be one and oh i don't know who a&m opens with um you know, both teams just like even when they're coming off a year like Miami did, like Miami's gonna in the preseason AP polls. I don't know if they'll be ranked, but they'll be right in the receiving votes group. So, uh, you know, you never know. Um, it'll definitely be like there'll be a spotlight on it. It'll be a chance. Like both teams will be. I think both. I think people around the country are thinking both teams can't possibly be as bad as they were last year. So like they're waiting for someone to to show up and and kind of prove that they're. Uh, they're back a little bit. So uh, that will be a fun one. Um, Miami, Ohio will be a fun one because it's the Miami versus Miami game. And um, just and Clemson, how about Clemson at Hard Rock? That'll be fun. Um, fun little schedule this year. So, and some fun home games, right? They didn't really have any fun home games last year. Pretty much all the big games were on the road last year. Yeah. Uh, at be. Clemson, at AM. Louisville is at Hard Rock. So, yeah. 
Like All right. It. Um, I think we can finish things up there. Uh, you can follow Susan on Twitter at S Miller Degnan. She'll be out at Mark Light Field all weekend long, uh, sitting through some rain delays. <laughs> I was just going to say that. N- nibbling on some brisket milkshakes. <laughs> um, you can follow me on Twitter at DB Wilson too. I will be in Las Vegas uh, for the Stanley oh. Cup final. Kind of oh. can't believe it. Um, so lucky. I'm I'm looking forward to it, uh, except that it's going to be like a hundred degrees when I land there on Friday morning. So, oh my um, god! As I uh, talking to John Van Beesbrook today, uh, he was like, "It's going to be the hottest combined temperatures in a, a finals Stanley Cup finals ever." But jumping between Fort Lauderdale and Las Vegas, so that's uh, crazy. So yeah, it'll be fun though. Um, we got Anthony Chang up in in Denver for the NBA Finals. Um, Got local sports bars around South Florida flooded with patrons. Um, and and I love people can go see, right? They can go um, watch the game. There's like watch parties. Yeah, for the I, I know for the Panthers. I, I assume for the Heat oh, cool. usually do that too. Um, I, I'm not sure. I haven't seen if they're doing it. But yeah, um, crazy. I mean, I, it's crazy. Never thought we would, I would see the day where it would be like this. And, what do you get for $10? I want to know. You, it's a seat. That's it. Oh, a seat. You get a seat. Yeah, okay. seat. I thought maybe you get some munchies or something. No, no, no. No, you got to pay for that. You got to pay for that. Um, all right. Uh, thanks again for listening. And uh, we'll talk to you guys next week. We'll, we'll come in. Uh, oh. See what happens with the baseball, I guess. Yeah. Yep. So Next week, for sure. Oh, and it's raining here now. So, yeah. Not a, not a good omen. So, all right. Uh, thanks again. We'll talk to you guys next week. Thank you.